just got over the line themselves today at home against Leicester City. Uh, we will speak live to Anna Slot very shortly. In the meantime, let's get through some of the analysis. And the first goal, which was scored by um, the lively Canate. We sort of talked about the fact that it's come from the corner. Virgil van Dijk and Canate have stayed up from it. But should we actually say that Liverpool do quite well to, to sort of manufacture the best crossing opportunity they can? They, they do. The initial delivery from, from Andy Robertson wasn't great. And this is an opportunity right now in this moment for Wolves to squeeze the space and get out. But they don't. They allow Liverpool to play. No pressure on the ball. You know, Trent Alexander-Arnold's got the opportunity to then deliver an OK ball back in. And then it's just come from the second phase. And here Jota finds himself on that left-hand side. They work it back to him. And then just see here, it's just 1v1 out with the striker. And it's an absolutely fantastic ball in. And, and like Jamie said, the, the towering presence of Canate in there, just a sheer physical force arriving onto we will, the ball. Just sorry to uh, interrupt you mid-flight, <laughs> Izzy, because the gaffer's, the gaffer's here, is. here <laughs> waiting for us. I don't know if you can see that, because you were so engrossed in the analysis, which is great. Yeah. But Anna Slott is waiting to speak to us. Anna, congratulations on, on getting that victory tonight. We, we just spoke to Ibrahim of Canate. Uh, he said that the result was more important than the performance. Would you go along with that? Uh, for the short, for the short term, it definitely is. But uh, for the long term, you also have to look at the performance. And um, I don't think we started off well, but we have to give credits to Wolves and to Gary O'Neill uh, when I say this, because I think they had a real good game plan, had a week to prepare, and um, and he did really well because we had some problems in the first 15 to 20 minutes. Afterwards, I think we took control over the game, and it wasn't that strange uh, the moment when we scored the one nil that we uh, that we scored the goal because just before we had a big chance with Dominic Sabasla as well. Can you give us some insight, Arne, into, into what Wolves did that made life difficult for you in that first half? <laughs> uh, uh, they overloaded our, our right side a lot uh, with many players. Uh, and, um, and, and normally we try to press with Mo Salah a bit more forward. So that's why it was a bit difficult for us in the start. But it's not always about tactics. It's also about how aggressive do you press. Um, uh, how strong are you in the duels? And I think second half we came out much better when it comes to pressing. Maybe tactics were a bit better from my side, but it also helped that the energy and the intensity was much higher than the way we started the first 15 to 20 minutes. So it's a question really of being patient for your team tonight. Now, I just saw the, the second goal, the first goal when you analysed it. And uh, what, what stands out for me is the patience we have, because I've, 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 I've spoken about this a few times already, that, that sometimes I feel we have to be more patient, especially against a low block team. I'm not saying Wolves were that today, but in this moment, when it was, I think it was a, was a, a, a corner kick, that, that uh, second phase corner kick, we were patient, kept circulating the ball and waiting for the right moment to bring the ball in. So it was a good goal. but. I think after the first 15 to 20 minutes, in general, we were much more patient and we controlled the game much better than, um, than the first 15 and the last 15 minutes. Arnie, Jamie Redknapp, I just want to talk about an individual player in Ryan, Ryan Gravenberch, who's been fantastic this season for you. I know at the start of the year, when you come to the club, you're looking at all the players that you've got at your disposal and you didn't perhaps have that number six or the profile that you wanted. And to see him and to give him the opportunity and how much he's took it, you must be so happy with that. Yeah, but not only me, I think all fans as well, and him included. Um, yeah, he's just very comfortable on the ball, and with him, Maka as well, McAllister. Uh, and that helps the team if you want to have a possession-based uh, style of play, and you want to have the ball, you want to keep it as long as you can. It always helps if you have two players that are so comfortable on the ball in the holding midfielder position. And the two of them can run as well. So I think uh, if you only look at the, thing Ryan does, the things Ryan does with the ball, we don't do enough justice to his game. He's, he's doing really a good job without the ball as well. And to be completely honest, that surprised me even a bit because I know him from the Dutch league. But um, I think at Bayern Munich and Jurgen did a real good job to make him also better without the ball. And that's what we are taking the benefits of right now. I'm just wondering because um, Ibrahim thought that he should have been the player of the match, Arna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who would have got your vote? Konate. Yeah. Did, did Ibrahim come? Okay. Then he probably, maybe he he forgot that the <laughs> moment that we conceded the goal. No, uh, oh, he's, uh, Arnie, like Arnie, that's what we he, said. He was not there, so, Arnie, uh, he's, a big, he's a big guy. We didn't want to show him 1-1. One, one. <laughs> no, no, no. So maybe that was the reason why we conceded, that he just, he wasn't there at the moment because... Um, 
uh, to say the least, it was avoidable. And let's uh, <laughs> say it like this. Just, to, you know, of course you are top of the league. And I know you'll say it's, it's very early stages and it, you've only played six games. But does it help you as a new coach bedding in your ideas uh, and getting that buy-in from, from the players and the supporters as well? Yeah, definitely. Uh, also, the results in pre-season helped with that, I think. Uh, the, the players start to believe in what you want, but it's not that strange that they believe in what we want because there are a lot of similarities to what they are used to and where they were really successful with, with Jürgen as well. So um, it helps, but uh, we are the first, at least I am the first, to understand that the six uh, fixtures we had have been much more difficult than, for example, the fixtures Wolves had. So they are, I think they are 20 at the table at the moment, but they play much, much, much better than that. And we still have a lot to prove if, we, um, if, we're, gonna, if we're gonna come across the, 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 the top side of the table, if, if you say it like this. So um, a lot to improve, but it's good that we have these points and that we are where we are at the moment. But just on that, are you, are you consciously being cautious of talking your team and your team's chances up this season? Or, or should we be talking about you as, as title contenders? I always try to be realistic and um, how I, I, Jürgen's work has been incredible over here. Everybody knows this and everybody underlines this, but two years ago there was the last time that they played Champions League and I think they ended up five. Last season was a season you could almost say without playing Europe because every time during the week the players that played in the weekend got some rest. Now we have to prove similar season like two years ago with hardly the same players that we can do well in the Champions League and in the Premier League. And that's something we still, in my opinion, have to prove uh, with, with almost the same players as two years ago, where the result was not uh, what, um, what, what, what the Liverpool supporters uh, would have loved to see. Yeah, a lot of football to be played. Arne, thank you so much for speaking to us tonight and congratulations on a third straight away win. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting. Let's go back to, we'll pick up on loads of those points as we go on, but let's go back to the analysis, which we cut you off. In How the dare we? Yeah, I do apologise. But interesting that he pointed out that it was about the patience of finding that right moment to put the ball into the box. Yeah, absolutely. And Liverpool needed to be patient today. And he's just alluded then to how well we'll set up and, and stop them from playing. And I thought Liverpool lacked the intensity, but I think this is a side of a fantastic team. They're able to win when they're not their usual selves. But we're just breaking down Canate's goal, the opener, again. And it comes from the second phase. We've seen the ball, the, the ball being delivered. If we just pause it here, this is, this is Strand Larsen, Wolves number nine up against Diego Jota, who's put the ball into an area where I think as a striker you go, I'm going to put it into an area which I want to score in, as in you know where to put the ball. And I think the delivery is absolutely excellent. Canate's got a run in here. He's got a little bit of yards to make up, yeah, but that's nice good. He's taken up, isn't it? it gives him the momentum to go and attack the ball. And then we just see here the ball's absolutely delicious. And the header is just, you know, it's unstoppable. I don't, I don't think Johnson can do anything about that, can he? No, I, I, I like this bit here. Like you said, I'll just take that back just a little bit because he, it's all about the timing of the run. And I, I look at foot patterns and, and Canate just gets his so right. And you can see number 24 there, Totti. You can see him there. He's got a position where he knows he's got a problem. He's got Virgil van Dijk just behind him and he's got a guy that's going to attack it with aggression. And it is such a good leap. He takes a, a jump there. And it's, so, it's almost unstoppable. Look at the height he gets and the doesn't power. Score more, really. it, well, it, he might do now because he's realised that you get a flavour for it. But look at that. Bang. Goalkeeper? Yeah, Tricky. possibly. Could do better. I mean, he'd, he'd made a great save just before from, by, uh, from uh, Soboslai. But that was a really a great cross on the run as well. Yeah. It's almost like we, it's a, we don't see it very often now because we so often see wingers that want to cut back in and play it back to the left back or hit that ball that's going that way. But when you see somebody... On the run, and like you, you make a great point because he's up against Strand Larson, who's a number nine, and he thinks, "Come, this is great, one on one." He go, takes him down the line and hits a ball, and it's so hard to defend he's against. He's also a striker who knows what strikers want. Absolutely, That's exactly, yeah. it's a, it, it just doesn't happen anymore. But when you see it, isn't it beautiful to see? It's you, such a great goal. You see so often, like you say, Jamie, in the wide areas, you're trying to carve the perfect opportunity to de deliver the ball, and sometimes it's just a case of getting it out of your feet like an old-fashioned winger and delivering a perfect ball in. And that's why Canate's towered mm. up and opened up the. Score. Was it an old fashioned goal. goal to a certain Some extent? Some great challenges from him, but shall we have a look why he wasn't the player of the match? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? No, As Arne, I just say, Arne reminded us. <laughs> no, but Arne, I love that from him. It was so cool, wasn't it? Just like, it's just, that's, it's just 
honest because yeah. he's like, did he not remember that? You know, like the one. Yeah. But I will, in, in Canati's defence, I think there is a, maybe a little bit of mix-up with the goalkeeper as well. This is something that you want to talk about as well, Izzy, because they, they beat that initial sort of Liverpool press. We talk about Gra uh, Graham and Birch and Soboslai, and I would say that's probably too deep a position by yeah. McAllister because once the, he breaks through the two, maybe he could come and get a little bit closer. Absolutely, and, and Lamina does really well. He just uses kind of Soboslai's pressure to get away from him and then what I love about this clip is the way that Cunha devises this opportunity. He slips Strand Larsen in and this is what creates the opportunity. I'll highlight Cunha's movement in a moment, but this is the belief that I was talking about with Wolves. They just chase down the loose ball and they end up getting a goal from it. But we see it better from this angle. If I just pause it here, I'm just going to take it back a moment and I just want to have a look at Cunha's positioning. Press play again. Here we go. Just have a little look at Cunha in this space here. He just moves away from McAllister to drive into this space. McAllister's looking that way. His body position is facing one way. Cunha's got his arms out going, give me the ball. I'm the number 10. I want to play. He gets the ball on the back foot. And then the next bit about this, I'm going to pause it again. He looks, he scans three or four times to play the ball out to his left. This is where we have the overload. And what he does is this disguise and the scan fools everyone because the ball ends up coming into this gap in between Van Dijk and Robertson. Still loads of time to deal with it. There's plenty of opportunities mm. to deal with it. Canate should have dealt with it. And then Eight Nori arrives as, a, as an attacking fullback into that space. He sniffs out the danger. He gets, he gets think, on the end of it. Does, do you think he thinks the goalkeeper is going to come there? Yeah, I think so. But Eight Nori, I think you've got to give him so much credit in here. Canate, I Brent think it's just, he, come well. on, he's your centre-back, you need to be stronger than that. Yeah, you, oh yeah, you, and you it's poor play, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I, I will feel, it, I do also think if the goalkeeper comes out with a bit of aggression and comes diving at the feet, he, he would take that, no doubt at all. Yeah. But it was a poor piece of play by, by Canati. but they're now Wolves, the, the crowd, the atmosphere was changing. Yeah, changed completely. Now you've got to make sure... And Gary, Gary O'Neill's frustration, I'm sure he's sitting in his office now, we're all thinking, that's where we've got to hang in the game. That's where you've got to be smart, you've got to make sure we don't concede quickly, we get everybody organised, and, and worst case, you get a point out of this game. But to, to the manner that they conceded would have been so disappointing Well, it was five minutes him. between the, the goal and the uh, penalty being converted, but actually only 40, 40 seconds. seconds from yeah. the restart is when the penalty is awarded. Yeah, and there's like a little... you say, manager's worst nightmare, Jamie. Yeah, of course, and there's a little bit of talk about, I think Wolves were a little bit disappointed about how they restarted this, this free kick here. He gets fouled there, Graven Birch, but I, I don't think you can complain. I really don't. I think Gomez there, uh, let me just highlight him, he's, he's the number eight, if anything. Mm. And I think we've got to be so careful with kicking the ball, we've seen the consequences of that lately. But once that foul gets given, and that's a tactical foul by Strand Larson, just stand on the ball. Make sure they don't play it quickly, because all of a sudden there, you're in a little bit of a mess anyway. You can see, you know, McAllister's the other side of Lamina. You've got to get, make sure you get players back in good position. There's too many people in this position after scoring a goal so quickly. And if, you, as soon as they break, you're in trouble. You can delay the restart within the realms of the rules, can't you? Yeah. You can put your body in the position to get, in, to get ahead of the ball and just give your teammates the opportunity to get back in. And then look what happens as a result. They end up switching the ball. You get Diaz out here. We didn't see Diaz out here too often, did we? 1v1. He comes inside and they just create this opportunity. But this is where Trent Alexander-Arnold is. I mean, his stats are ridiculous for his assists, what he can do, comfortable off both feet. We just want to highlight Jota in here, don't we? He's smart. And you also said, didn't you, about Diaz, about his role, and also you could highlight McAllister in there. Yeah, well, number There's... four, Bueno, I think has to, he's got a problem. He sees three players there, so he has to probably go with McAllister as well. And he, and he knows, you can see him pointing in here. He knows he's got an issue. And... and Semedo. Semedo's getting back in like he, like he should be. And you've also got Robertson out here causing mm. a bit of an issue, you know, raising attention. So as the ball comes in from, from Trent Alexander-Arnold, he shifts it, shapes it, and it's a fantastic ball in. Mm. But you, Jota, both, you both said penalty straight away. Yeah, yeah, and it is. But Jota is so clever. He is not the, the target number nine, but my word, he makes up for it for how crafty he is. Yeah, and he I knows think... exactly what he's doing. Yeah. That's the, that's, 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 the, that's the part there. You can see Semedo gets his left arm on Jota's shoulder. He's in, he knows he's in trouble because of, like you mentioned, how good the quality yeah. of the ball was. Is it one of those where he might get away with it if his arm was a bit lower? Possibly. But because yeah. it's so high. Yeah, this is the angle here. This is, a really, this is quite damning for him, though. Look, you can see he gets his arm on him there. But as soon as Jota feels that contact, he's down very quickly. It's not, an, it's not the, the worst foul we've ever seen. But it certainly was one that had that consequence. 
And well, we, all, we always fancy up. Salah. <laughs> of course he does. Uh, scores in his uh, third consecutive away game of the season. Yeah, it's beautifully dispatched. Sends Johnston the wrong way and you probably wouldn't want anyone else in that position the form he's in. A note of caution, though, from Arna Slot in his interview with us. That's, that's uh, Salah's tally so far. He won't be far away in the shout for the golden boot. Well, depending on how many Harlan gets, <laughs> I suppose. He'll <laughs> it, be up there, uh, for sure. And a note of caution, though, from, from Arno Slot. You heard that in his interview with us. You know, why, why are you... Oh, he said being realistic, isn't he, about the challenge that Liverpool face. He wasn't able to bring in new players this summer, or they didn't bring in new players this summer. And over this next period through the uh, autumn, it's, it's pretty much a game every three days, either side of international breaks. Yeah, Palace... Next weekend, I, I think, you know, a side who are struggling, Bologna midweek, and then we're looking towards those that Chelsea, Chelsea at home, Arsenal away, and then the back-to-backs against Brighton, which will be very interesting to see how, how that turns out in, in the League Cup and then obviously in the Premier League. But yeah, they're, they're tough fixtures and they're going to get tougher for them. And, and obviously the second, uh, they're a home to Bologna, and then they go, there's a 12.45 kick-off, Crystal Palace as well, away from home which is something that Liverpool had a few problems. Yeah, 12, 30. Always yeah, creates 12, problems, 12, 30. doesn't it? Yeah, I didn't like it. And it's it, the but... quality of the opposition as well. Another thing that Arna Slot pointed to. Yeah, absolutely. When you got a Chelsea game, Leipzig, Arsenal away, great fixtures, but that's what you wanted. With Liverpool, I didn't know what to expect this year. When you've lost such an icon of a manager, how, was they, how were they going to adjust? But will we know a lot more after that yeah. period? I think absolutely. I already know. I already like what I see. Well, if, if they know, play, I like if they, what I see. If they play like they did tonight, if we're being, you know, totally perfectionists, I, I don't think they're going to get through those fixtures easily at all. No, I don't think they're title contenders. I think, I think they definitely are title contenders. I think they're silent contenders for the title. Um, and you, you look at the squad they've got, and obviously Arnie Slot's done a fantastic job since coming in. I think they've had a, a seamless transition with the way they want to play. I think the exciting part about them is there seems to be more to come. Like, they've got through that game today in third gear. And I think there's so much more to come. But if they play like they did this evening, I think they'll have problems against yeah. those. And he alluded to that fact, didn't he? He yeah, knows there's he still knows. a lot of work to be done, but there are so many good signs. I like what he's done. He's calm. He speaks really well. You can see the players are enjoying their football. And when you're winning, it's a lot easier. But those, yeah, some really difficult. I, I look at the two fixtures. Obviously, Chelsea have, have been amazing so far this season. They really surprised me. And obviously, Arsenal. They're the games that are going to dictate the season for them. But they've got to make sure they, first of all, like, as you said, take care of that Crystal Palace one next weekend. Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting to see who's, who's finding themselves near the top in these early few weeks of this season. Um, who are we going to start with? Arsenal here. They made it look pretty tough today, Izzy. We had an eye on this one as we were building up to our game today. Well, they had a fantastic opportunity with Manchester City dropping points at lunchtime. They had, they had it right there in their hands and Leicester did really well to get back in the game but I, I do think that this is the belief and this is the aura that Arteta has created at Arsenal Football Club they've got the ability to back themselves even in the dying moments of games and that is a massive win I bet, I bet the Emirates was rocking after that uh, for a reminder it was it was 2-2 going into the 94th minute of the game mm. Jamie wow. so it, that would have been an absolute shocker from their perspective, Arsenal, having led 2-0 in the game as well. If they Not did just drop that, points, Manchester right. City dropping points early in the day. I mean, you look at that and think, what an opportunity. But sometimes that makes you a bit more anxious. You know, the 2-0 up got a bit complacent, gave away a couple of... Mm. Poor, good, actually, you know, certainly the second goal from Leicester was a really good volley. Um, and then you're thinking, my God, we might end up dropping two points here. But they have got players that can change games. He bought an, uh, and Wary that did some great things, cut inside, got the, got the energy back into the game. A huge three points for them. You know, they had that a lot last year but you don't want that chaotic football every week that will catch up on you talking of uh, players who can change games the extraordinary Cole Palmer story just goes on and on the first player in Premier League history to score four first half <laughs> goals no wonder he was laughing about it uh, he is just sensational is he isn't he's he absolutely ridiculous he's, he's such a good footballer and to see him thriving he, he's taken it by the scruff of the neck since he arrived at Chelsea and it's so often he's just he's seamless with the way that he plays football. He's at the heart of everything they do. And I think he's really, you know, thriving off being one of the main the main guys at that football club and fully deserved for him as well. It's going to be fascinating to see their development, isn't it, Jamie? What are we talking about? Champions League contender, where they are now? Could they even go beyond that? Yeah, uh, um, 
I'm not sure about that, but they've, they've been really good. I must admit, the manager, and there was a lot of pressure from, there was so much noise outside of it from pundits, everybody alike was looking at him. <laughs> 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 oh, myself, <laughs> I, I was certainly, every, everybody was thinking, that how, how, are the, how can they make this work? And we've never seen anything before. It's, it's unprecedented. Buying this level of players, the manager had to deal with an awful lot in that first three, four weeks of the season with players leaving. There's been, you know, obviously transfers and happening and, Bringing, having to bring players back into the squad. But what I'm seeing with his Chelsea side, and it's taken a little bit of time, is how well coached they are. Really good coach that he's got them playing in a certain way, but he's got match winners. When you buy that many forwards, that many wingers, you need match winners. And you've got Cole Palmer, who is, like as he said, just a joy. He's like a throwback. Watching him play with no fear whatsoever. It's a joy. And any Chelsea fan that goes there week in, week out is seeing someone that's really playing at top-level football right now. Really exciting for Chelsea, but also for England and whoever their new full-time manager will be there. Is some real talent. Ryan, I know you can't stop laughing. Um, first of all, Ubu, that was, that was an interesting game against Wolves. Probably not one of Liverpool's best. How would you sum it up? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, Wolves was very good today. They started very well and was a little bit tough for us uh, the first half. After we score and we have a little bit of control of the game and second half they come back to 1-1 and after we score to 1 and after I think uh, it was a great battle until the end. But the more important is the three points and we are very happy with that. Yeah, Ryan, after Liverpool score, but then what would you say about Ibu throughout the match? Because it was a little bit messy, wasn't it, for the equaliser? I know, I know. I think, but at the end, we did really good. And <laughs> 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 no, and uh, Ibu defended really well. You saw the last, the last second when he came. You cannot go past him because, you know, he's still yeah, <laughs> so <nice>. big. <laughs> that feeling, though, right now, in this moment of time of being top of the Premier League, yes, it's really, really early, but you want to be in and around there, don't you, come the end? Yeah, of course. Uh, I think a team like Liverpool also always has to be like um, in the top four, for sure. And, um, yeah, we keep pushing, we keep pushing, but it's still really early. What do you put today down to in terms of the overall performance, not being at the way that fans would expect Liverpool to be? No, but this is a Premier League. When you play a Premier League, every game it's very hard. And uh, OK, but the fans expect three points and we did it. This is a more important. Ad. Let's go home with the three points. Now we have an important game uh, Wednesday and we have to start the recovery now to be ready for that game. One of the things the manager spoke about earlier on this week before your League Cup tie was, was concentration. It was being 100% active. Was there a little bit of lapse of concentration throughout the game? Yeah, I think we missed a lot of concentration uh, today during the game because we missed so many easy balls, me, so many players as well. And uh, we have to work on it. Everything cannot be perfect every time. And today we see it, but uh, we won. But we have to learn about what we, we missed today. And uh, I think, yes, we need more concentration and more focus during the game, and we have to work on it. Ryan, you mentioned the word perfect there. It was a, I wouldn't say it was a difficult season for you last season, but this season, you are shining. <laughs> no, no. Um, of course, uh, this season, I want to show myself again. And uh, I think I'm, I'm in the right way, so uh, I have to keep going. And, uh, and, yeah, I'm happy, so. Do you feel it's just the coaches breathing new life into you? Um, no, you just put me in the starting eleven and give me a, really, uh, a lot of confidence. And um, yeah, you see it. Um, um, I think I do really well. So he's talking about confidence, Ibu. Would you like to present the Player of the Match award? I know, I know you, you you're, you're doing it begrudgingly. Sky Sports, Sky Sports. Who decides who is the man of the match? How this is possible? How this was okay? It's, it's my brother. I have to give to him. Milan, I score. Today I score. I save one or two balls and I didn't deserve it. No, no, no. What, what happened? I know. You know. You have to talk with them. I don't know who decided. Okay, you deserve it as well. No, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. But you did that work. Congratulations, my brother. Gary Thank Neville. you. Gary Neville. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't decide. Yeah, no Gary on this panel. But I tell you what, in fact, both of them can take a lot of plaudits from what they've done so far this season. As Juliet mentioned there, Canase, the strength at the back and what he brings to the defence. But Gravenberg and the way he's adopted himself as the, as the six in that side. Yeah, as you say, Canate already, you know, established, well yeah. established as a top centre half. A brilliant centre half is, you know, he's got everything. And I think he could be, you know, the, the, the future. Virgil van Dijk's really in, a, in the, you know, the peak of his powers at the moment. But 
Canate has still got a bit to learn. He's still a little bit younger as well. So I look forward to, to seeing him improve and, and maybe even get to Virgil's standard one day. You never know. Uh, Gravenberg is, is a little bit different, having to establish himself in the team. We all know that Liverpool went for one or two number sixes, uh, central midfield players in the summer, couldn't get them. So he's almost been put in there by default in a little way. Mm. Uh, but he's grasped his chance, I think. I mean, he's doing pretty well in there. You he's, might think he, like Liverpool still needs someone in that position, but he's done all right. He's done brilliantly well, but he's not a defensive midfield player, which is fine, because when you play in teams like this, which they'll beat, um, he, he, look, he's, he's, he's 190 centimetres. You know, he's 22 years old, he's got everything, but he's not a specialist defensive midfield, but there's a difference. I think he's a brilliant midfield player, he's a box to box, mm. depending on who you play. But I think in a big game, in a one off game, to go win a, a Premier League at Champions League, I think you need specialists. You know, Liverpool showed that with, with a Fabinho, or City showed that with a Rodri. I think they'll still address his position, but I think credit Gravenberg, you know, he's grabbed his chance, and that's all you need. He said, just, they said, what's different? He said, just play me. Yeah. You know, and, and that's all you need as a player. You need somebody to trust you, and he's proven it. I do think tougher tests will come and then they'll see if, if that position even the goal today that's Liverpool's midfield you know he goes to press early in if you're going to be a defensive midfield you've got to be there on counter-attacks that's one of the most important things so I, I love what he's doing but I think I think they'll still go get somebody okay that's interesting but let's have a look at Canarsie's contribution because it was quite telling wasn't it after what was a pretty lacklustre first half an hour especially for Liverpool Two minutes into the stoppage time at the end of the first half, they finally broke Wolves' resolve. Yeah, I mean, he's very dangerous, isn't he, in this situation. The size, um, the athleticism, you know, the leap, the, the, the power in the header. I mean, it's brilliant from Jota. Look at this, just this turn of pace there. He burst past his man, and what about that for a ball? I mean, so inviting. But, hey, you've got to be have all those attributes to attack the ball and head it down as well. And it was a really good goal, just at the right time for Liverpool. I think Jota's one of the most underrated players in the league. In terms of you know, in terms of finishing, he's brilliant finish in front of goal. But what's a ball with his weaker left foot? Stands it up for Konate. And the one thing you would say about Liverpool is that they have size on their side. You know, they got Konate, they have got Virgil Van Dijk, Sabosley. You know, they're Gakpo. They're, they're big players if they need it. Now, if Konate played his part with the goal, mm. what happened here? It's catalog, really. I mean, <laughs> ugly. You could say Allison. You could say Konate. Um, you know, Canate's no doubt about it. He's waiting for Allison to come, but he doesn't want to come that far out of his goal, and, and, and you can understand that. Also, a natural reaction from Trent Alexander-Arnold to go on to the, go on to the line, whereas if he just stands where he was, he, uh, he clears it. You know, Ait Nori goes into the position where, where Trent could have been. A catalogue of errors, really, in, in decision between goalkeeper and centre-half, probably. You can shield the ball when you're like a yard away from the goal line. You can't shield it when you're six yards away. Yeah. To be fair, Lars just threw him out of the way, didn't he? And, he then, did, yeah. and then he had a tap in. So he just kind of miscalculated in terms of where he was on the pitch, trying to just see the ball out. Yeah, but it, what's interesting is this is a team that's only conceded one goal before that. So there is a level of understanding already there between Allison and his back line. So would you be surprised to see something like that? No, happen? it happens. You know, it, it happens. He, 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 the game is so quick and sometimes you just make a make a, you know, a wrong decision. I think there, when he looks at it back, he realises, I can't shield the ball there. Just kick mm -hmm. it out. You know, just kick it up the line with your left. But I, I think now, because everyone's trying to play, you don't want to give it away or you don't want to kick it out for a corner. So we just, um, just the wrong decision in, in, a, in a crucial moment. Yeah, and before we go back to the uh, other key moment in the game, which is, of course, this, the penalty taken by Mohamed Salah, I'm delighted to say we can get some post-match reaction now from Molyneux. Alexis McAllister joins us now. Alexis, great to talk to you. First of all, that wasn't perhaps Liverpool at their best, but that felt like a big win in the end. Hello, everyone. I hope you're, you're OK. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, everyone in the dressing room knows that it wasn't the best performance. Uh, but the good thing is that we got the win. Um, of course, there is there is a still room for, for improvement. But the important thing, as I said, is, is that we got the three points. You know, one thing you often hear in, in football, footballers aren't robots. And although you'd scored 11 goals in the last three games, in that first half, why was it not clicking for Liverpool? I think we expected quite a different game uh, from them. Uh, we have to forgive 
credit credit to them as well uh, because they did a very good job uh, pressing high and 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 in their build up from the back as well. Uh, we tried to press uh, with more uh, to the centre back, but um, I think they adapted very well and play uh, quite a few balls to the to the left back, so that uh, put us in in troubles. Uh, but I think second half uh, the team adapted very well and and yeah that's why we we got the win. Yeah, and the way you came back so soon with that second goal after they'd equalised uh, was also quite key. Now look, I know it's early in the season, but how important is it to be top of the table after just six games? Yeah, it was very important to 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 score the goal uh, that soon. To be to be honest, uh, you know when when you can see the goal and and you are playing away, you could you could see the fans and feel the fans, uh, and I think they did it. But uh, with that pain, I think we got uh, more confidence and 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 play uh, better. Uh, but yeah, as you say, it's just early in the season. Uh, we are not thinking about. Uh, where we are, we just want to to improve. Uh, we know that we can improve, so that's what 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 we will do. We will we will work very hard to to get better, and and now it's time to to recover because we have a very important game during the week. Alexis, it's Michael Owen here. Well played today. I was just wondering. You say it's early in the season. Absolutely, it's true. How close do you think you are with a new manager um, to being? At your best, in terms of the team, do you think there's still a, a long way to go for you to peak, or do you think you're, you know, you're already getting the messages of the manager? Uh, no, I think I think the team uh, knows what the manager uh, wants uh, already. Um, but as I said, uh, it's not that easy. You have good days, bad days, you know, because you you were a player and a fantastic player. <laughs> um, today wasn't our best, uh, but I think the team is getting to to the idea. Uh, personally, uh, I love the idea. I think uh, I get on the ball. Um, so much that I really liked it. So we will try to go in the same way, but of course, uh, with uh, trying to, to improve uh, those, those things. So room for improvement, but seven wins out of eight in all competitions this season isn't a bad start. Alexis, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Liverpool midfielder Alexis McAllister joining us. Back uh, to the third goal of the game and the way that Liverpool regained the lead from the penalty spot. Diego Jota involved here with Nelson Semedo. Any debate in this decision for you, Michael? No, I don't think so. I think the referee did particularly well. He, he was bold and he made that decision. And of course, you've always got the backup of VAR if you make a bad decision. But he saw the, the, uh, the decision Jota got on the wrong side of his man, Semedo, I think it was, and he gets dragged down. I don't think anybody can can look at that and say, no, it's not a penalty, there's an arm dragging him down, defender gets the wrong side, penalty. <clears throat> yeah, easy. One thing I would say is the ball from Trent's brilliant. Yeah. And, and it, it just puts Tomato in a world of trouble yeah. and he just grabs. It's all about that Every, every player there, when you get wrong side, yeah. they grab. And let's be honest, Mo's not missing. You know, it's just... I don't think any of us doubted Mo Salah here, Michael. Yeah. No, and it was important, wasn't it, um, to, to score straight after Wolves. I mean, Wolves, the fans, the players, as soon as you equalise, you get that, you know, adrenaline, you get that belief again, and all of a sudden, bang, you know, score again, and it almost deflates them so much. Um, so it was a really good time to score for Liverpool, and, uh, and as Owen says, Mo was never going to miss from the penalty spot. Liverpool holding on then for all three points for fourth consecutive win. You can tell there he's got total belief in his players and his squad. And dare I say, you agree with him. Yeah, but you've got to love uh, to have a manager like, like that. You know, even though you lost, he's positive. He said there's a lot of stuff I love out there. He has a game plan, he wants him to play. And I like the fact they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with everyone. You know, you, you look at, you know, the first six fixtures they play. Arsenal, Chelsea, Newcastle, Villa, Liverpool. That's tough. That's about as tough as it gets. Now they'll go on a little run where they play teams they should beat. And they, and they probably will beat them because today they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool, didn't hide, and I thought they, they played some really good stuff. And is that the reason, perhaps, why you feel he deserves more time? It's because you look at those fixtures, and that was always going to be tough for them. Yeah, you only have to look at la uh, last season. He was a particularly good season, mm. and, um, and these players have proven it, and so has the manager, that, that they can compete at this level. Um, you've got to look a little bit deeper at certain things. Yes, only one point out of the first six games, but... We've mentioned it before. Tough start, calmer water ahead. Mm. I'm sure they'll pick up things. And it's not, you don't watch that team and think, oh, they're not playing for the manager, oh, they're struggling. It, yes, results aren't going great. 
but they still look all right. Yeah. Briefly on Liverpool, with Man City and Arsenal both dropping points in the last two match weeks, mm. their continued momentum looks good, doesn't it? Great. Looks really good. Yeah, as I say, probably rougher waters ahead yeah, for them, but so far so good. Yeah, and Arna Slot's reign's got off to the best possible start. Flying. Absolutely flying. Yeah. <laughs> Early days, though, of course. We're only six games into this new league season, but at Molyneux there were no shocks. But Liverpool end the day top. Good early signs for their new head coach. How does feel? Feels good. You want to be up there, but it doesn't tell me that much. Like I said, uh, if you look at the Wolves, they're, I think, down on the table, but they did much, much, much better than uh, being there. And we had quite a good schedule till now. It, it, it tells me something after 19 games, but not after six. That's five league wins out of six for Arnie Slot in his early days as Liverpool's head coach. How good were they against the Wolves for you, Michael? Not brilliant. They weren't at the best, no question about that. First half, in particular, Wolves were very good for the first half an hour, in fact. Liverpool then got a big chance late on in the half, uh, missed that, and then they scored just on the stroke of half-time, and then it changed the game a little bit. Um, but it wasn't their, their best performance. We spoke to Lexi McAllister afterwards, and he said, he said the same. Um, you know, and it's been, it has been a good start for them. You know, they're... they're you know, flying high, um, if only they had they beat Nottingham Forest, we'd all be drooling over them saying they're going to win the league and everything else like that. So they, there is a little bit of frag fragility there. Yeah. Um, but they'll be very happy. A decent enough start, though. You know, they have had, you know, softish um, fixtures so far. Harder, harder times will come. Yeah, particularly after this next international break, they certainly become more challenging. But the, the one controversial mo moment, I suppose, was the penalty call... Nelson Semedo and Diego Jota. What do you think, Owen? Was this a clear-cut penalty for you? Well, the only controversial thing was his defending, really. <laughs> he gets caught, caught wrong side. And the reason he gets caught wrong side is because the ball from Trent is so good. Jota's brilliant. just peels off into that area and the ball's too good. And when you get there, you get caught wrong side, every defender's going to grab. You, but you can't. You know, just let him head the ball, trust your goalkeeper. Johnson made a good save. Before that, but that's, I mean, that's a clear penalty. I don't think there's any controversy there. Michael? Yeah, no question about it. So soon as well after, after Wolves had, had equalised. Um, you know, it must have been a, a hammer blow when they saw Mo Salah smack the ball into the back of the net. He was never going to miss. And uh, pretty much plain sailing after that. I don't think Wolves really troubled Liverpool too much after that. Yeah. Seven wins in eight in all competitions. If you take into account, you know, Domestic competitions, Champions League as well. And look at the points, though, in the league, as far as Arna Slot's concerned. No oh, well. Liverpool manager in the Premier League era has got more than his 15 points. Has, he, has this gone much better than you anticipated, Michael? Uh, no, I wouldn't say much better. As I referred to before, it's been a, a decent enough start. In fact, I think if you ask most Liverpool fans, they'll think, you know what, <laughs> looking at that, yes... They played Manchester United away, and, and that was a great result. But Manchester United aren't the force of old at the moment. Apart from that, Liverpool fans will be expecting them to, to win every game. Losing at home to Nottingham Forest was, a, you know, a, obviously a poor result. So it's going well. I mean, visually, it's going well. It looks calm. You know, it's a consistent team. No big injuries yet, touch wood. Um, so everything's good. Everything's yeah. fine at the moment. But some of the other big teams, some of their challenges, Arsenal have played Manchester City. Inevitable, there was going to be points dropped there, etc. So, yeah, good start for Liverpool. Everybody will be happy. I think Liverpool fans' fears are allayed, put it that way. But I don't think they're dancing thinking, no. oh my word, this is an upgrade, everything's going to be even better. But so far, so good. On the flip side, one point from six for Wolves. But can they be encouraged from what they saw today, their fans? They're the best last place side I've ever seen. <laughs> One point somehow. I don't, they played as good as Liverpool today and probably could have got something. So they got some really good players. They got a really positive manager and Gale. And if they keep playing that way, I think they'll just be fine. They've had the opposite of Liverpool. They've yeah. had really difficult games and it's probably shown in the points tally. Do you take a lot of positives from that performance despite the defeat? Uh, the lads gave everything, yeah. We had a right go. Um, lost, lost control, went off, off game plan just after we scored. Got a little bit caught in the emotion of, of equalising and got badly punished as we have been at the moment but yeah an another game against top opposition where we're us and we, we do our best to give the best version of us and um, gutted for the lads because they, they yeah they they deserve something for the efforts they've put in over the last few weeks against some tough opposition and um, and we haven't managed to get one to go our way yet so um, 
but loads loads of stuff that I absolutely love about about the group in that in that performance and um, yeah we, we keep going what struck you the most you started so aggressively the first 20 25 minutes mm -hmm. you were so aggressive so on it yeah of course you, we, we, we needed to you don't want to make it frantic and open against Liverpool um, as you saw when, when it went to 1-1 and we did for, for one minute of the game we, we got punished with a um, yeah we got a bit carried away opened the game up too much and uh, but apart from that, there was there was a lot of good bits in there. Um, could maybe have been a bit more intelligent with our use of the ball towards the end. You know, when we we made some mad mad decisions at the end when we're chasing the game and we just need to get the ball wide and we need to get the ball in the box. And, um, but yeah, that 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 is a group as you can see and as you can see by the reaction of the fans at the end that is fighting and giving everything and, and can play some good stuff. So tough to take, of course, another loss which which no one wants. But um, yeah, we've. If, if we keep pushing and we keep performing and we keep scrapping and giving everything like we are, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to cause some teams some problems this year. Were those decisions towards the end of the game, was that when you were passing the ball back to the goalkeeper quite a lot and a little, lacked a little, a little bit, bit of urgency? Yeah, a little bit too patient in that, in that part there and then just some other stuff where we weren't patient enough, where we get near the goal and we try and play through balls between like six players when you know, we've got Carlos on the side and we can recycle it, get it wide. Liverpool got big numbers at that moment, so... Yeah, just some decision making around game state, really. Um, but gutted for the lads because they, they they gave everything and uh, a little blip for a minute. Um, if we were on a different run and had a different amount of fortune at this moment, maybe Liverpool don't capitalise on that on that opportunity that we give them. But as it's going at this moment, it ends up as a penalty. And um, then even from there, we managed to bounce back and we managed to fight and scrap and have some some decent chances. So. They're, they're a top side that we've just gone sort of toe to toe with, and um, the lads deserve deserve credit for that. Unfortunately, we don't get any points to, to add to the credit. You talk about the difficulties and the challenges that you're facing, and, it, and it's well known. Um, it's encouraging, though, when your chairman and your sporting director they speak to a national newspaper and they talk about the project that is here at Wolves. And it was a wide-ranging interview that they gave, but there is that certainly that support and that belief that the club is going in the right direction. No, I, I can guarantee you that everyone inside that changing room, including myself, is giving absolutely everything and doing the, the best that they, that they possibly can. So, um, yeah, the, the, and that, that will always be the case. Um, we lost two centre-backs this week, one for a whole season. Uh, our experience won to illness. Totti Gomez has rushed back a week early um, and we've just gone just gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool and, 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 and didn't quite do enough. So um, lots of positives. Disappointed that we couldn't give the fans a, a result to, to, to go with it because they, they deserve a result as well with the way that they've stuck with the lads. Um, I don't think you'll find many teams that are on one point from six games and, and get that sort of reception at the end. So it shows the level of understanding from the supporters, the, the connection with the players and what they give. Um, and we keep working, and like I say, we're 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 going to be just fine. We just need to we need to find a way to get that first win on the board, and then we'll be able to push on. Well, good luck and go well. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. It's another defeat, but according to Opta, it was statistically the hardest set of fixtures that anybody had to start this season, which perhaps explains why they only have one point on the board so far. This is what comes in the next 10 games. And yes, there is Manchester City lurking the other side of the next international break. But you look at the league positions of those next 10 opponents. And do you see there, Izzy, the possibility of this turning for Wolves and for Gary O'Neill? Well, it's, it's very difficult to tell, you know, because the league positions will change uh, as the games go along. But I think that you look at Everton today winning massive, massive three points to, to lift themselves above the bottom three. And I, I think, you know, it is game by game, but it, it seems to be united. At Wolves, you know, in this sort of situation, I think, you know, it's when cracks would start to appear, but there doesn't seem to be any cracks, which is a huge positive. That was that was the um, the interview which Juliet was referring to in the interview there yeah. with Gary that uh, Matt Hobbs and Jeff Shee, the chairman, had done this week in the Daily Telegraph. If there was any doubt about that yeah. togetherness, that seemed to banish that. Absolutely, and I think it, it's really nice, you know, for Gary O'Neill to be supported publicly as well as, you know, behind the scenes, I'm sure. And, I, and we've seen Gary, and he was, he was in Monday Night Football last season with, with yourself. He's got a fantastic way of looking at the game and he's got a good reputation for developing footballers. And I think, you know, sometimes you do need time and they are in a bad space at the moment, but Gary O'Neill's shown it before, he can get a team out of this sort of situation. And, and like I said, the unity is number one, the most important thing, but finding that sort of belief, you've got to find your belief 
to, to go and get something. Like Liverpool were not on it today. They, they got the three points, but they weren't themselves. And that's an opportunity perhaps missed from Wolves to go and challenge that and to go and get up in their faces, be aggressive, but they weren't. Are you sure there's enough in that squad, Jamie? I, I think he's going to need help in January, if, I, if, if I'm looking at it certainly defensively. Um, November, Palace, Southampton and Fulham are three big games from obviously the games next week. They've got Brentford and they've got Man City at home and they beat Man City last year. But it feels like November is going to be a really important time for them. And then can you get to the window and make sure you're still in a nice position? I do think when you've got the money from Neto, you've got the money from Kilman. I think that's what Gary will be asking for. Can you just give me a little bit of help here? Because at the moment it is difficult for him. You're trying to get a balance of team out. You're trying to get the best formation that's going to work for you. Um, but there are players that I really like in that team. Go on. I know Andre, I think, has been a, going to be a good signing. I'm not sure. I think 20 odd million they paid for him, Brazilian international. He can play. And, I, and you asked me a question a couple of weeks ago uh, how important is it he gets used to the Premier League? He's already used to it. He's class. You can see it. He controls the midfield. Uh, Cunha, Gomez, players that can really do something different. So Strand Larsen is a. Is a is an important one because if you're going to stay up, you need your striker to score goals. He shows me things that I like, but he just needs a bit of luck. And at times he's having to work on scraps. He's not getting maybe the, the quality or the quantity of chances that he needs, but he's eager. He runs. You can see there is potential, but the longer it goes on without him getting that goal, the harder it's going to become for him. But there are, there are some positives, but it's just you keep getting chins, you keep losing games. Gary will give a really good assessment there because he said, we were right in the game, but the emotion got to us. You can't let it happen like that. You've got to make sure you stay in the game. 